and we'll talk about the bosons. Those are the um, those are the the force mediators. They are the force carriers, and they have integral spin, spin zero, one, two, and I think actually we have an elementary particle for each one of those. So um, let's see. You guys know about photon. It's spin one. Um, we talked about W boson, right? It's uh, also spin one. And I guess for whatever reason on this table, um, at least here, they are listing all the particles, both the particle and antiparticle. Because the double charged W bosons are antiparticle of each other. And photon is its own antiparticle. Two photons can annihilate each other. And the neutral G boson is also its own antiparticle. Um, Gluon, for whatever reason, they decided to list um, only one instead of the eight different kinds that we were talking about last time. I don't know if they mentioned that, uh, that there are supposed to be eight different color charge. Um, I guess not. Oh, never mind. Um, so gluon, you know, they list only one. But uh, when you, if you go, do go into particle physics theory, um, it is important. Um, how many different kinds of gluons there are, or how many different color charges there are. Um, oh, I said that we have uh, spin zero, spin one, and spin two. So spin zero, that's one of the modern twigs. They found the Higgs boson, and Higgs boson is a spin zero particle. Spin two, um, I, I think most people believe in this. Most people believe that there is some kind of quantum mechanical uh, theory of gravity. Um, we don't have one that works yet, but we believe it exists. <laughs> and in the quantum mechanical theory of gravity, there ought to be a graviton. And um, that graviton, based on the symmetry that's uh, associated with um, the general relativity, uh, the only gravitational wave that can be produced is what's called um, um, quadrupole radiation, not dipole radiation. It's associated with the fact that there's no such thing as a negative mass the particle. Um, so, and the quadrupole radiation has to be associated with the spin two particle. So, um, so um, that's the elementary spin two particle that almost everyone believes they exist. So I'm gonna pretend that it does exist. <laughs> so those are the bosons. Um, I guess I should uh, point out one. Um, Interesting thing that you see here that you I kind of mentioned last time is just how heavy the weak force mediators are. The um, the both the W and the Z boson they are 80 GeV, 90 GeV, 80 90 times the mass of um, the proton, <laughs> and um, that heavy mass is important in introducing one interesting question, and two, explaining one um, interesting feature that I'm going to point to that's in this part of the um, poster in a little bit. One interesting question it raises is that uh, when we, people start talking about the unified electroweak theory. So this is what uh, unified theory means. It's kind of saying that when you are grouping these particles together, you are saying that they are kind of, they are brothers and sisters. They are comparable to each other. And you can especially see that here with up and down quarks. They are comparable to each other. In fact, you have interactions that turns up quark into down quark. So they are in some sense interchangeable, like a spin up electron in a magnetic field is interchangeable with a spin down electron. You, there are processes that will turn one into the other, right? So if you are starting to say that these are siblings, it's like a, you know, looking at one person who's seven, foot, seven feet tall, another person who's a four foot tall, and they tell you they are brother and sister. It's like, how can you be, don't you guys have the same genes? Why is one person so much taller than the other one? So here the particle physics question is, why are these so much heavier than the other? And the explanation for that is in what's called the Higgs mechanism. And that's where Higgs boson comes from. 
Uh, it's something called the spontaneous symmetry breaking. So in the kind of like in the like a Pangea theory of um, particle physics, the very original picture is that they are uh, comparable to each other. They are all massless. But there's a mechanism that broke the symmetry and gave these particles uh, mass. And the kind of mathematical procedure that does that um, says that there should be another kind of elementary excitation that should look like a particle, and that is a Higgs boson. Um, so um, he's, he exposed on that, so that's the theory that was proposed in the 1980s. That's the theory of elect unified electroweak um, interaction, and that's the kind of the last uh, structural piece in the standard model, and that's the theory that was developed in the 1980s. And I will tell you that, so, you know, Higgs boson was confirmed to exist in 2014. It would have been a bigger news if uh, they never found the Higgs boson with the upgraded LHC. Like, if they never found it, that would have been actually bigger news. Kind of more of a trickling news, but um, that would have been a bigger surprise to particle physicists than the fact that they found it. They've been expecting it for 30, 40 years. So, of course, they found it. Um, so, um, so that's one interesting question raised by the heavy mass of the W and the G boson. And that question is now answered in the affirmative in the discovery of the Higgs boson. I'll show you in the updated uh, thing. And the other um, question that uh, haven't quite been raised because you know, we haven't talked about you know, particle physics yet, it comes down to uh, when you uh, when you do actual, you know, quantitative things with particle physics. So um, I guess I can actually use this diagram here. So I've been drawing um, Feynman diagrams. That's kind of a version of this, right? Two particles coming in, or a particle, or particle, antiparticle coming in, annihilating, producing a photon that decaying into other things. You've seen those diagrams, right? And when you draw it as a Feynman diagram, with each of the vertexes, you associate a coupling constant or coupling strength. How strong is this interaction? And uh, when, it's an electro, when it's an electromagnetic vertex, like with a photon, you associate a factor. When it's a weak vertex, like with a Z boson, or with a beta decay, with a W boson, then you associate a different factor with it. When it's a strong interaction uh, with the gluons, then you associate a different factor here. And so this is the calculation that's uh, actually done by you know, particle physics graduate students um, with the help of the Feynman diagram. That's what the tool, the Feynman diagram, is for. And when you look at that coupling constant, the, element, the fundamental coupling constant, let's say electromagnetic coupling constant, you just set that at 1. It's actually a 1 over 137, but let's just set it at 1 for now. Then, um, <laughs> then um, the coupling constant for weak interaction, it's actually comparable to the electromagnetic interaction. It's, uh, um, it's not that very different. And in fact, it's this coupling constant that hints at the fact that electromagnetic interaction might be the same as the weak interaction, or that they are in the same family. But then the thing you have to explain is why, in real life, is the weak interaction so much weaker? And that's explained by the heavier mass of the W boson and the Z boson. So the heavier mass does two things. One, it makes the interaction short range. Because of the Yukawa type potential, there's an exponential decay that's associated with this mass. There will be one of the homework question that kind of ties into that. And, um, and so that means at any uh, appreciable length scale, that's what this is describing. And any appreciable length scale, like 10 to minus 18 meters, which is only like you know, 1,000 times smaller than scale of nucleus, then, um, wait, that, all right, um, that, that times 30, <laughs> it, uh, it becomes a much weaker interaction. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah. So that's a, something. So this is the question that these are similar, but these are not, and that question is answered by the heavy mass of the force carriers in the weak interaction. 